So that should take care of our check token. And uh, what we want to do also with each of these is we want to destroy the information as soon as we're done processing. So once this check token passes, then we want to go down and destroy our token after we've done getting all the information out. Um, I'm going to do it before we do any returns so that way I don't run into any problems. So right before this if statement, I'm going to call destroy token. And I will do that oops, on all of my functions that use check token. Um, so right above the if statement here, paste that in. And right above the if statement here. Um, we'll do it here as well. And then also up in the save category. All right, and that is all the ones that are using our uh, functions or using our check token. Um, the last bit that we need to do is create our 404 page. Um, I'm just going to create a new uh, PHP script in my folder, so in my main folder um, file or create whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it 404.php so we know it's an error page and click on finish. And then I'm going to include my header and footers. Include once, whoops. And I'm going to include, and I just like to use parentheses, but you can use whatever method you'd like. Includes header.php. Oops. So I trying to copy it. I, I found a, a shortcut earlier, and it doesn't seem to be working. The uh, the actual shortcuts for something with Camtasia. So I'm just going to copy and paste that footer.php, and now I can just close this PHP tag and open another one. There we go. So that way I'm running just regular HTML inside. Uh, I'm going to create a h1 tag here. Call it 404 create a paragraph tag and inside this is just a quick thing that one of my teachers taught me um, that I thought was kind of funny so I'm going to type in ebcac e -A -R, geez, e -B -K -A -C, and that what that stands for is error between keyboard and chair please check the connection So if it's a human error, then uh, you're going to get this error message. Um, so if I go back into my code, now I should have everything in place for this script to work correctly. So if I jump back over to my code, or whoops, back over to my uh, login form here, as long as I don't modify anything, so I'm just going to log in like a normal user, one, two, three, four, hit login, I should go to my login script no problem. But let's say I'm a hacker and I'm trying to modify this code. Let's say I have someone's user session or something like that or I'm trying to trick the system into letting me in. So I'm going to inspect my element, or inspect my code, come down to my token and modify this. And now I have an updated uh, token value. It doesn't match the one that's in the session because you can't access that uh, from this console. Um, so I'm going to try and log in again and I should get my error message which I do. Um, so now we are safely protecting our web application using session tokens and uh, that session token should never be the same from which I'm going to do this so I'll just go run notepad from form to form and I'm just going to copy whatever the uh, the value is go here copy this one and I will do a refresh on the page which I should, probably should have just left that open inspect my element and providing I did this correctly we should have different values which uh, nope it's still showing the same so So I made a mistake. Um, what's happening is because I'm not actually getting into the process loop um, 
here, it's uh, it's actually not updating my my um, session variable or my session user token. So if I were to actually log in using and I've already got my my token saved, if I were to log in and go to a create a new contact and look at the token here, then we should have a completely different token, which we do, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so on the top here we have the token from our user login form on the bottom we have the new contact user token and if I were to hit cancel and go into new category and look at the token from this it should be a completely different token well so it's it's showing up the same because it hasn't processed anything yet so um, what you can do is every time you do a page load, you can destroy your token as well, which why don't we go ahead and do that. So go into our forms. Why don't we put that in our gen token function? So we'll call destroy token. We'll try that. All right. So now we'll copy this one, paste it in here, which it should be completely different. And if I refresh the page again, inspect the code, should get a completely different session token. So that's another way that you can do it. On every page load, you can create a new user session token that's only available for the pages you're on. Um, so that would probably be the safer way of going about it is to create a new one every page load. Um, but you can do it however you want. If you want them to have the same uh, user session token until they actually do some kind of process, um, then you can do that approach. Uh, but this, where you're destroying the token on every page and then creating a new one, that would be uh, the, the safer approach in my opinion. Uh, so let me know what you think. If you know of a better way, um, please share it. Oh, I know what I want to do too. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do, which I will cover in this video as well, is there's a new thing that I've learned about um, recently rather than using um, captcha or recapture or whatever whatever library you want to use uh, there's a new method out there which you can do a div hide the div uh, display hidden actually you know what I will I'll do this in a completely new video since it's not related well it, it is but it would I think it would take me more time to explain it than what I want to invest in this particular video. Uh, so I'm getting to the 18 or the eight minute mark in the second video. Uh, so I will go ahead and cut off here. Um, definitely stay tuned for the next video on adding this piece that I started talking about here. Uh, it should be a pretty decent uh, alternative to recapture or captcha. It's not perfect, but from my experience so far, it's worked really, really well. Uh, so. Stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments, uh, definitely post them here on YouTube. And then definitely check out my, my Facebook page. I'm trying to grow that out a little bit. Um, so if you have any questions or you want to get involved there, uh, hit me up on, on Facebook. And I've also got a Twitter account, Google+. Plus. I'll list all those in the, in, at the end of the video here uh, so you guys can, uh, can add those as well. If you like this video, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Be the first to get notifications on new video posts, ask questions, and engage with other users.